Hi, it's John from Android Addicts, and today we're doing another benchmark test for the Galaxy S21. So here we have the Exynos version on the left and the Snapdragon on the right. Now currently it's 28.3 degrees in here, so it's very hot. I've been trying to keep these as cool as possible. You can see they've already got up to about 30 degrees on both phones here. So I'm just going to start this test off and we'll just see how they both compare. Now I have taken out the SIM cards again on my Exynos to try and keep it fair. And just bear in mind now the temperature of the UK, which is extremely hot at the moment compared to normal. That obviously did affect the result from last month, which I didn't really take into consideration, so I do apologise about that. But we'll see how we get on with the July update now and see how they both compare. Okay, so the results are in and we're looking a lot better this time round. So compared to June's 965-3359, we've gone back up to over a thousand on the single core on the Exynos and 3279 isn't too bad, it's not as good as it was in May still. So if we have a look at the Snapdragon, we can see we've gone up to over a thousand as well, 1096, which is nearly actually twice as good as it was last month with its pitiful score of 615. And the multi-core has gone up to 3328 compared to 2607. So it's still not as good as May's results. And I still do think, even when these phones are kept cooler, that the performance isn't quite as good as May. I have done tests, certainly after the June, update with the cooler on constantly and it still performed worse than the May update on both phones. Anyway we're going to move on to the compute benchmark now so I'll skip to the end and we'll see how that gets on. Okay so the compute scores are in and we can see here that the Exynos is still outshining the Snapdragon with 6980 even though that's down from June's and May's still we are still beating the Snapdragon by over 2,000 points. Snapdragon has actually gone up quite well. It's nearly as good as it was in May, just a few points down from May, but it has seen a notable improvement since June. I'll just scroll through the results here if you want to have a look. Okay, so next up is the Antutu benchmark here. So we're starting off at around 32 degrees on both phones. Again, this is as cool as I could get them really. As I'm recording this voiceover, the temperature in the office here is nearly 31 degrees, so it is swelteringly hot. So we'll just skip through this video, it's running at four times speed. And don't forget there are time codes in the description if you want to just skip to the results.
Okay, so here we are with the Antutu benchmark results and we can see they're still struggling to reach the 700,000 mark. So compared to last month's, the Exynos has improved somewhat, but not by a huge amount. Uh, same with the Snapdragon, it's actually increased by about five, 6,000. Again, as I said, after I did some more tests with the June update after my video, I did notice that the performance was still quite poor even with the phone called down. So have a look at May's results for example. They still haven't been beaten yet. 735 for the Exynos and 752 for the Snapdragon. Okay, next up is going to be the anti -G stress test and we'll just set the temperature to 50 degrees and then set it 15 minutes and I'll skip to the end and we'll see how they look. Okay, so some interesting results here. If we have a look at them in more detail, starting off with the Exynos, we can see here that the July update has certainly improved compared to the June update. No longer seeing that poor performance at the end of the test there. I'd say overall it's much better in comparison to the June update. And if we compare it to the May update, we can actually see that it's actually very similar indeed. I'd even go as far as saying that the July update is actually performing slightly better than the May update. So we can certainly see less dips below that 60 mark in July compared to the May update and even towards the end it's holding on to that 80% performance mark better than it was in May. So don't forget May it was cool and the room was cool, July boiling hot and we're actually seeing some good performance from the Exynos so that's nice to see. Okay so if we look at the CPU cores here we can see again where we had that horrendous throttling down to about 1 gigahertz that does seem to have disappeared now which is nice. We were really struggling around these sort of areas in June after the 10 minute mark. That's quite uh, scary to see. So again, we can actually compare this to the May update and as we saw before, they're actually very similar now. Again, I'd even go as far as to say that if we have a look at say Core 6, it's actually performing a lot better than it was back in May, which is when we saw our best performance. So they've definitely improved some things I think on the Exynos this month. And we're definitely peaking higher over the two gigahertz more frequently, I'd say compared to May, so yeah, definitely an improvement for the Exynos here. Okay, moving on to the Snapdragon. We can see here the July update is performing a lot better than the June update was. June we saw these horrible, you know, peaking at around 60% performance, and now we're at least hitting around 80% more often, and even peaking at 100 quite frequently too. Now, if we compare that to the May update, they're very similar here, you can see not quite as many peaks to 100, but it is looking a very similar sort of shaped graph compared to May. Now this is a nice simple one here, the June update, you can see the throttling from around the seven, eight minute mark. Like I said at the time, I've never seen throttling like that before on the Snapdragon, really quite bad. So it's nice to see in the July update that that has seemed to have stopped. Starting temperature obviously has made a slight difference, but overall they do still reach the, you know, the peak temperature each time, so if it was going to throttle, I'd expect to see some throttling towards this sort of 11, 12 minute mark again, but there's nothing there. So that's great to see for the Snapdragon. And we can have a look at that in comparison to the May update and we can see it's almost identical. Maybe a few less drops there for CPU Core 6. But overall, yeah, definitely an improvement on both CPUs this month. So that's really great to see that things are going back to normal. Okay, so 3D Mark next and we're going to do the standard wildlife test. I do apologize for doing the extreme one last time. It was quite late, I seem to recall, when I recorded the video, so obviously I was quite tired, clicked the wrong one, and didn't even realize. I think I was so upset at the time that the performance in Geekbench was bad that uh, I was uh, losing the will to live. But anyway, I'll uh, skip through to the end of this, and we'll see what the results are this month. Okay, so here we are with the wildlife results, and I did rerun the June test after a few people commented that I ran the wrong one, so, the correct score for June was 5857, so we have actually seen a bit of a decrease there when compared to the result this month. Still nothing has beaten the May result of 5908, and if we have a look at the Snapdragon, we've gone to 5678, which is again a decrease from 5820 from last month, and 5833 from May. So again, nothing It seems to have beaten anything in the May update, so let's move on to the slingshot test now, and we'll just see how that goes as well.
Okay, so slingshot results, there's no change at all for the Exynos, it's always maxing out. Apart from back in February where we scored 7974, the Exynos has always maxed out each time. Now the Snapdragon has actually increased a fair bit here, it's gone up by nearly 2000 since last month, but it still hasn't beaten its maxed out score, which it did manage to achieve. And the only time it's managed to achieve that actually was in May, so I'm still putting my hands down and saying that the May update was still the best one overall for both phones. We can have a look at the graph here, just compare them both. And again, although the demo doesn't really run that well on the Exynos, the graphics tests do actually run better than the Snapdragon. Okay, so that is the end of the test for July and I think I'm well, I'm certainly happy that I was last month. Obviously starting the phones at a cooler temperature or as cool as I can get would have helped a bit but because of the heat at the moment in the UK it is still going to be affecting the performance somewhat. I still think in general that they have improved since the last month's update so that's good to see. I have put all these results on my site so you can browse through them and compare things at your leisure. I'll put a link down below and you can just see a quick screenshot on the screen there but it is quite interesting to see how these phones have compared over the last few months that they've been released. So I do have a camera comparison test coming up as well for this month. It's quite hard editing at the moment because it's just so hot in this room. I can barely uh, breathe sometimes, but I will try and get it together as soon as I can and get that uploaded for your viewing pleasure. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the like button. That really helps out. And if you've got any comments regarding this video, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to become a member of the channel, you can click on the join button and that really helps out. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.